So I personally think that this should be a go off, not a debate, because I think that it's sort of, in my opinion, a one sided view on this proliferation of conspiracy theories online. But I don't want to force you to have the same opinion as me. So we can talk about this in like a more open discussion if you actually think it's not No, 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 not no. we're not bad. debating. Yeah, I didn't come in here ready for a debate. I literally am just like, you lo- like, you've been so passionate about conspiracy theories. I'm like, are they fun? Am I no. not? Okay, yeah, that that there might be some moments where I like temper my opinion and I'm a little different than you. But let's, yeah, I think we can agree that this is mostly a go-off section, especially because there's like some massive conspiracies around like things that have caused a lot of climate change climate change vaccines like political campaigns being fronts for like pedophile rings and and things like that like uh uh, shootings being fake do you know what i mean like we're going to talk about all these things that obviously are are proliferating on youtube and leading to also really negative outcomes so like yeah yeah, me believing in ufos didn't really have a big impact on the world i'm not saying it couldn't i'm not saying that lots of people believing that might not be a problem but specifically there are many examples of uh, conspiracy theories that are leading to like violence and stuff. Yeah, like. so I think that it's important. So people probably listening to this know that we work on YouTube. So we are really always conscious of the trends that are going on. We are conscious of the impact that YouTube has on society. We're conscious of how we have to design our channels to be shared by an algorithm or to mm-hmm. be successful online. Like we're always trying to think about that. And conspiracy theories now, I think for more than ever before on YouTube, are so popular to the point that YouTube is actually trying and being forced to really think how and why do they share these types of videos because they aren't rooted in fact. And so... And it's like anyone can say anything. anything. Whereas before, like, not that, no, people couldn't say anything, but like news networks where people were getting most of their media couldn't get away with just like an unsubstantiated crazy claim. Exactly. And so I think climate change being used by... President, I, oh God, every time I say that word, I just want to like pass out. <laughs> President Donald Trump as a conspiracy theory against business is something that we have to live in a world where there's actually a president who has talked about that mm-hmm. before. Like climate change is not a conspiracy theory. And there for sure are people on YouTube who are proliferating that information. And one thing that really scares me is that when you really get into like the physiology and like the dopamine release of like sort of the thrill you get when you learn about these things and the unknown and is that that type of information is going to be more interesting to people. Mm -hmm. This is one of my biggest, like, uh, challenges as, like, a science... As my parents... A science communicator. That's a nice way of saying what we... It's not like science YouTuber. Sometimes it's like... (laughs) I say that I'm a science... I know, I know. I just sometimes... I just put it in quotes. (laughs) No, I mean, like, I know we're science communicators, but I just, like, sometimes, like, I don't know. I'm like, it sounds so, like, profash. Okay, whatever. We are. I'm just like... (laughs) Okay, yeah, yeah. But as science communicators, it's like science is not necessarily always the catchiest thing. Like you have to try and spin it. You have to be really careful with the way that you speak. But with things like YouTube, you can say conspiracy theories, they can be as fun as you want. They Mm -hmm. can be as ridiculous as you want. And that is what our brains are designed to be interested in. And to draw attention to. If something's like dangerous or something seems extreme, your mind is like, I need to I need to be aware of that. And like the, and like mistrust in the government, that's an easy, easy thing to get on board with because it's really fun to blame things outside of your control and that's really scary when you don't have like effective journalism rules on YouTube which is why I think YouTube YouTube needs to decide are they a media platform like how are they going to stop this misinformation but realistically how do they Right. Like they with the amount of content that's uploaded all the time, like what do you think? So if you don't know, yeah, there's a lot of problems on YouTube just because like these conspiracy theories are getting out of hand and leading to serious misinformation. YouTube stance up until this point has been like, hey, like we can't monitor content. We can start to demonetize things, but we can't take stuff down because that would be... Well, like, a lot of it's about free speech, too. Yeah, like allowing people to use a platform. I mean, But, it's but they company. also hide behind the fact that they're always like 400 yeah, I think hours I, are uploaded yeah, every minute. And it's, it's also like, like, okay, but then you don't get to reap the benefits. billions of dollars yes. off yes. of this unless you're willing to put... Like, that's the problem. Yeah. Like if they were a non not for profit and we're like, it's, oh, we don't know what to do. Like we have this beautiful platform and then it's just out of our control. And we don't have the money to do it. It's like, no, they just don't want to dip into their pockets to stop the problem they've created, which is really frustrating, I think. And I think that also they've, tried like with that they want on conspiracy theory videos to have a link below to a wikipedia page that actually brings up the real information like that's something they're actually trying to but, bake into their algorithm so, i guess yeah i mean and that's like they probably can do that i I'm, i think that's at least they a can of start. course do yeah. That, yeah i guess i'm sorry my question is like 
how do how does the algorithm know when something other than knowing it's a topic that is ripe for conspiracy theories how does it know otherwise if something is a conspiracy theory how does it know, when something gets flagged that's real and honest not also get flagged as a conspiracy theory like i mean these algorithms and programmers are hopefully much smarter than i am but there's so much nuance to this that i they should be putting the resources into i'm just like how are they going to do that well okay so there's a there's uh, specific, it's called Section 230, and it's like a literal like law. It's like in the Communications Decency Act, and it's a law that prevents YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter from being held legally liable for the content posted by their users, right? So it's like there's actually like a law that doesn't hold them accountable for what is said on their platform. Mm-hmm. And so that is something like they don't get in trouble for what people say on their platform, and they also don't get in trouble if they make an algorithm that recommends those specific videos. Right. So I'm like, if law came into place that said, you know what, your platform cannot proliferate misinformation about vaccines, cannot proliferate, yeah. then then the, they would have to obviously work under that law so they don't continue to get sued and it would change. And I'm also like, even if the law isn't holding them accountable for everything on their website, it can and should be holding them accountable for what, what they, they recommend. Yeah. Exactly. Your algorithm is purposefully... And maybe not like consciously by human brains, but choosing things like people are more likely to click on a crazy title and thumbnail that's really divisive and really controversial. Of course that makes sense. But they need to create an algorithm that doesn't suggest and profit off of those things. So I think we should talk right now so people really fully understand or what are some of these damaging uh, conspiracy theories that have happened online. So one, you were talking about a shooting. One was a reporter was shot on live television and... It was awful, and it led the family in mourning to make a very obvious decision to start to advocate for proper gun laws in America. Mm -hmm. And then it was all of a sudden taken as a conspiracy theory that it was a fake murder, like, used by the left to create, like, gun ownership, like, trying to take away our guns. And that was very popular on YouTube, and so that family is now trying to, like, sue YouTube and figure out a way to be like, how can we... Because what would that have done to that family? You know what I mean? Like, the person I love is dead and you're trying to tell me that we were used for like that we faked it like that is messed up that's similar to like Alex Jones on Sandy Hook being done by actors and I know he's come out and said like oh it's often taken out of context like he was just reporting on the theories I think it's his whole argument like I didn't say that I was just bringing up that lots of people think that this is paid actors and it's like that's that's bullshit to me like you can't just say you didn't say it because you were just telling what like if you're on a massive platform sharing information and you're like all these other people think Sandy Hook is fake so maybe it is like and now he's protecting himself by saying like I said maybe and like I was talking about other people it's like no that is literally spreading a conspiracy which has led to those families being literally harassed not just online in person people showing up to their homes so many of the families of survivors have had to move multiple times it's devastating honestly you think as though like the shootings weren't enough. Just recently, a couple of people, like kids and parents involved in that that were survivors have committed suicide because they're like, obviously their lives, not just from like people necessarily coming and saying it was fake. But that's something that I never thought like, like humanity would have to deal with is yeah. the repercussions like in the that the turmoil angle. of somebody who's suffering so much and then spinning it to make them suffer even more. Which is why I do Spark. think this is a go off because I think conspiracy theories now, especially proliferating on a platform like YouTube, whether it is uh, something like that, which is blatantly awful and based in violence or even the Pizzagate <sighs> shooter, the fact that that was just like obviously a made up conspiracy theory that led to violence. Th- those are dangerous. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's to be said that, you know, like these Shane Dawson videos that are like very popular because they're conspiracy theories, even mm-hmm. getting down to something like Area 51 on a platform like YouTube, you need to understand the impact that that has right. on people's ability to think critically. And I think YouTube is such a huge platform for young people that YouTube really needs to think about how are they educating a whole generation of people to mm-hmm. think about the world. Yeah. Like you need to understand what is an actual resource for effective backed information in fact. Because mm-hmm. if you're getting your information from people's opinion and all these popular YouTubers, like that's going to create your over time, you're going to lose your ability to understand where real information comes from. And that it means a whole generation of people are being programmed differently. And that could have a huge impact on society. And YouTube, like we have been in 
baked into this culture for seven years, there was a time when it was like, we both weren't on board. We're like, YouTube is going to change everything. Like the hope for the, the future. It's the freedom. Anyone can say whatever they want. And that is going to be good. And we are living through a really interesting time in history where we're like, hold up. Wait. It seems obvious now, but that's mm-hmm. not good. Yeah. You need to have key holders in some capacity. For example, journalism, there needs to be editors and fact checkers Mm -hmm. so that when you read the information, you know you're getting it from a viable source. And it's like, I'm scared. And it's like one of those Pew Research studies found that it was like a half of people using YouTube use it for news and information about like relevant events. And so even if stuff is spliced in with that, like you're, you might, someone could say, what often happens with conspiracy theories is you start with a grain of truth. And that's what primes people to be like, hey, this is an indisputable thing. And or even in a news like YouTube channel, someone just saying things factually and then gradually bringing in the moments and tying them in that are not supported in any way. And it's, it is really dangerous. Like, of course, we hope that people on YouTube, there are reliable channels and, and our channel is, I know we should is, talk about that like, because we are we are the same like no one's coming down on us if we were to do something wrong YouTube doesn't follow up with us and so it may like and actually and they trust us the podcast to, listeners need to know everything video we've made is based not it's all fake I'm yeah. just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but it could be it's true it could like be. sometimes like I think about like if we not that we could start a successful conspiracy but like we could misinform people even incidentally but some some we could do it intentionally like if we want to make a video of fake science it might get called out but there might be hundreds of thousands of people that leave that video not knowing any better and so for the what do you do about that listening we put all of our references in our description and we confidently call our channel ASAP Science. So we want to be held to the standards of science. And that does open up like we've had videos in the past where we get emails and people say, you know, this is my opinion from science. Like we've either changed them. Sometimes we take them down. Like we are really open to that because that's what we want. But it's like we fully understand the fact that we can put whatever we want on YouTube and no one is essentially fact checking us, which is really interesting. It puts a mm-hmm. lot of responsibility and time on us but then it's like we are always trying to think of the catchiest title and the best thumbnail and I'm like imagine we were someone else without science degrees and we just would be like oh okay well why don't we just tweak this a bit like yeah, there's well, no you, harm you like, see where we're that leads gonna... even with people like Logan Paul like that's nothing to do with conspiracy but it is to do with extremist content right yeah. like stuff that really is shocking and overvalued and that in many ways is what conspiracy theories fall into people are fascinated by them and I think like yeah we should talk a little bit about What does it mean to be fascinated by, like, stories of ghosts, stories of UFOs? Like, because the hard part is, okay, we really don't have very much, if any, evidence that ghosts are real, okay? But are we saying that none exist, that we shouldn't be allowed to talk about it? Like, what's the line, I think, of saying ASAP Science Video wanted to talk about UFOs and actually look incredibly at any evidence that ever existed or didn't exist, whatever. Should that video be taken down? Or I guess that's maybe what they're trying to do is find a step like putting a Wikipedia page so you can cross-reference. Hey, here's a controversial topic. Here's another resource so you can at least see if it's like completely off base with what this channel or this video is saying. But Or can... recommending. It's like, can you ma- like you might have to build an algorithm that makes less money for your platform. Yeah. You might have to think less in a capitalist sense and think, okay, if this person's watching a lot of videos about ghosts, the obvious thing what YouTube does now is it su- suggests more videos about ghosts, more right. videos, maybe even about other conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. But actually, if they cared about humanity, they'd be like, okay, why don't we put the next recommended video as something that's actually debunking ghosts? Mm-hmm. Or maybe like a scientific look at ghosts or literally something about something completely out of the wheelhouse to allow people to have a more nuanced perspective on the world. But they haven't thought about that. They've thought about what is the best way to get eyeballs on their Mm. platform to not leave the platform. And that is about, yeah, making money and keeping people within their ecosystems. And we are for the first time really starting to feel the negative aspects of that. And it's just frustrating because we know YouTube, we know their algorithm, and we know that it, there are literally people who I'm like, it's it's your fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you have to fix this. Yeah, or there's a you certain don't have point to, I where guess. I think for long enough, YouTube employees, YouTubers have sat aside and said, like, look, like, no one person's response. Like, I didn't I didn't program it. Like, I'm not. But it's like, no, if you work at YouTube, you're responsible. Like, you're and if you are a YouTuber who doesn't talk about it, doesn't acknowledge it, doesn't try and call out that there is a lot of bad education out there, then you're part of that problem. Because 
it's like when a corporation gets so greedy and there's so many levels of not just corruption but money hunger that no one no one person of course is running the business it's run by thousands of people but all that complacency leads into a world that is only leading to a single goal which is money which of course is going to lead to problems Mm -hmm. and i'm just like yeah it's just come to a point where it's like you can't work at youtube unless you're actively fighting against this and not say you're part of the problem and i just yeah to wrap this up i just remember a long time ago a really high up person at YouTube saying they are so excited for the future when you come home from work and they've built an algorithm that knows exactly what you want to watch. That you don't have to click anything. Anything. It just starts playing. It just starts playing. And I remember it was like this time everyone clapped. It Mm -hmm. was like, that's genius. There wasn't a critical thought around that notion at Mm -hmm. all. And here we are probably about five years later where I'm like, I don't. That was that long ago that that was said. Yeah. But I mean, it was one of the first sort of like those types of meetings that we went to. And it was like, I don't think they would say that confidently now mm-hmm. in the same way, even though that's the way the system was built and mm-hmm. continues to be built. Yeah. But I think they wouldn't, from a PR perspective, say the same thing because we yeah. now understand from like, a societal that's perspective. A problem. That's a problem. <laughs> like, you know, people like if you're deciding what people want to watch, then you're deciding. The then people you are, are responsible. Think. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. also then you can't say YouTube's not responsible yeah. for what goes on our platform. It's like, no, then you are fully responsible for what's on your platform if you're fully recommending. Yeah, it's like they're always just being like, it's not us, Tube. It's YouTube. Like, throwing it all on us. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I mean, I'm curious to know what other people's thoughts are. I also, like, really want to know, like, what other people's favorite conspiracy theories are. There's one I didn't talk about. I won't go into it, but his name is John I love how you're just, like, going back back into, like, this. I'm just going to tell you the premise. John Titer, 1998, sent a fax, was from the future, disappeared for years. 2003 comes back on the forums is like a man from the future explaining that he knows all this stuff blah 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 anyway I got real deep into John Titer it was very fascinating what did he know he I, well you'd have to go this is so I hypocritical that we're literally no. like and this <laughs> and is they, only creating damage and I'm literally like we're ending no, 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 by who's no. John Titer what did he say I'm should I brush my like, teeth should I, I floss I want to know other people's conspiracy theories and oh, that was right. another one that stood out that I didn't talk about so you really love conspiracy theories but you're able I don't, to see I don't anymore it's just when okay. I was young it shows how susceptible and how exciting it is when you're young yeah yeah, yeah. To like read those stories and yeah. to be like, oh my gosh, a person from the future has come back to our time yeah. and is on this And your brain's website. still developing yeah. and you're still figuring out how the world works and it's easy to get together to stick it to the government or yeah. whatever. 